What's up y'all, I'm Dan Jams taking over for Airbear today to check out the new K678 Cardioid Condenser Mic from Fifine. Airbear tossed this one to me since I'm more of the professional audio video tech guy, been in the field for over 10 years, so he wanted to just get my take on it. As of filming this video, this is not yet released to the North American market because it's actually getting rebranded and repackaged, so they're currently updating their packaging for better protection during shipping so it doesn't get damaged, which is a good thing. They listen to their customers on that one, so there's a little bit of a delay on when this comes to the United States. This is a pre-release model, so take that into consideration. This is marketed as a budget streaming mic meant to directly compete with the Yeti and the Yeti Nano. The original Yeti like this one is retailing at $130 and the Yeti Nano is at $100, while the K678 is at $54. Also brought in another popular competitor, the Samson G-Track Pro, which competes directly with the Yeti, both $130, both with similar features and sets. So we're gonna test all these mics, see how they all stack up to each other, price, performance, and features and we'll see which one comes out on top. We previously did a review for another Fifi name mic, I think it was the K699B, and that one turned out surprisingly good for a $30 mic. So I'm definitely interested to see how their $54 version is gonna stack up. Full transparency, Fifi Nay did send this out to us, but that in no way affects the integrity of this review. This is my honest professional opinion on whether or not this mic is worth it for you and your specific situation. Starting with the build, at first glance, this basically looks like a mini stripped down version of the Yeti with the same full metal pill capsule style body and a metal mesh grill on top. Onboard physical knob controls and a slimmer, more angular stand with small rubber pads on the bottom to prevent scratching your desk. It's much smaller and lighter than its competitors. Decent quality build for the price. Important note, pro tip, I never recommend using any of the stands on these mics. They're going to pick up keyboard smashes and accidental dings and kicks to your desk. I always recommend putting these on a boom arm and a shock mount to reduce any sort of vibrations from your desk or not even attach them to your desk altogether. You'll thank me later. Boom arm, shock mount, pop filter. Those are the three you need for any of these mics, regardless of what you choose. So comparing size, the Yeti and the G-Track are built like tanks. They're huge. You ever park a small car between two big Ford F-150 pickup trucks with lift kits? It's kind of like that. Kind of comes with a downside. They're heavier. They take up more space on your desk. They require heavier, more expensive, higher payload boom arms to actually suspend them. This one requires a proprietary shock mount from Yeti, but you can get a $25 to $30 knockoff on that one. This one requires a spider mount if you're going to shock mount that one. And as far as shock mount for this guy, you're probably just going to end up using the Rycote. That one ends up being around 50 bucks. That's the only one I can confidently say is actually going to fit this one. This one may cost $20 more for a shock mount versus these two that you can get a $30 knockoff of their main ones or get the $30 brand name shock mount like the SPO4, this is SPO1, don't use this with that one. SPO4 if you're gonna go for the G-Track Pro. Now for the features. The Fifine has a soft press mute button on the front with an LED showing red when muted and green when on and active. On the back, we have a mic gain knob and a headphone volume knob. On the underside, it has a 2.5 millimeter headphone output port for zero latency monitoring, mini USB port, and surprisingly, quarter 20 thread for mounting. That's unusual for a mic to have that quarter 20 mount since that's typically reserved for tripod mounting systems. However, if you get that universal Rycote mount, that doesn't matter. It's gonna mount to the side and leave the bottom open for your cables to hang free. As for bit rate and resolution, it records at 16-bit 48,000 hertz, which is pretty standard and good enough for streaming. In comparison, the Yeti has all the features of the K678 plus three extra pickup patterns on the back. On top of the standard cardioid, it's got omnidirectional, bidirectional, and stereo, but let's be real, if you're just streaming, you're never going to use any of those other ones. You're just going to use cardioid. Same recording bit depth and sample rate of 16-bit 48,000 hertz, mute button and mic volume knobs on the front mic gain and pickup pattern knobs on the rear. The stand is pretty heavy and has the largest footprint of the three, taking up way more space on your desk, but like I said before, ditch the stand and get a boom arm and shock mount to eliminate that problem. Now for the G-Track. It has all the features of the Yeti and the K678 minus the stereo pickup pattern on the Yeti. However, the G-Track has two advantages over the others. For one, it records up to 24-bit 48,000 hertz, or 16-bit 96,000 hertz, which is great if you're trying to record professional studio quality audio in a DAW, like Audacity or Audition. And it has a quarter inch instrument line input on the back, which gives you the ability to record both yourself singing and playing guitar or any other instrument like a beat machine or a looping machine at the same time that you're singing. So if you're a musician and you'd like the extra options, this is the mic for you. As for controls, it has a small toggle on the front to switch between pickup patterns and another toggle to switch between mono, microphone only, and two track, microphone plus instrument 
at the same time. Also on the front is a mute button, mic, instrument, and headphone volume knobs, and the standard 2.5 millimeter headphone jack on the rear for live monitoring. It has the most features, highest recording quality, and best build quality out of all three. Now what you all came here for is the audio test. For this test, I'm gonna do cardioid pattern only, 16 bit, 48,000 Hertz, no post processing. The only thing I'm gonna do in post is adjust volume and gain levels to make sure they all level match each other so one's not way louder or way quieter than the other. That way you can have an equal and fair comparison overall. Testing the original Blue Yeti, 30% system settings and around 75% on the gain knob on the rear. Testing one, two, three. Testing the same settings on the Fifine K678, around 30% in system settings and around 75% on the mic gain knob itself. Testing one, two, three. Testing the Samson G Track Pro, similar settings. Testing the Samson G Track Pro, about six inches away. Testing one, two, three. All right, after hearing all three of these, and I had to go back and listen to these two multiple times, these were just so similar. Honestly, at times, depending on how I had my gain and my system volume set up, it was difficult to tell a difference between this one and this one. But after just listening a bunch of times and testing at different gain levels, the Yeti, I will have to say, has a little bit of a clarity advantage, but not much. With a little bit of EQ and compression, it'd sound really damn close to the Yeti. So close to where I really can't justify a $75 difference to buy a Yeti versus this one, or even a $45 difference if you're going with the Yeti Nano, which is $100 versus this one, which is $54. It's like, even after that, when these two are thrown through Twitch's or YouTube's compression for streaming, they're gonna sound so close that it's gonna be a negligible difference. As for the Samson, this one was just way better and in a whole nother league than these two. The sound is so much more professional, so much more depth, presence, bass, and mids are fuller, and way less background noise. If you're a musician and a singer, man, I would just go for this one, because this one is made for you. However, if you're just streaming, and you're just trying to upgrade from the bad mic that's on your headsets that just sounds like a crap walkie-talkie, you could just go with the K678 and it's gonna do the job just fine. I wouldn't spend the extra 45 to 75 bucks on a Yeti. They're pretty overrated. You could save that money and spend that on your boom arm, your shock mount, and other things that you're gonna need for your setup anyway. All right, let's list off the pros and cons. Number one, it's less than half the price of these two competitors and only a little over half the price of the Yeti Nano. Decent quality and performance for the price. Has live zero latency monitoring, which is a nice feature to have. It's smaller and lighter, takes up less room on your desk. And lastly, it's just a good beginner streaming mic. It's simple enough. It's plug and play right into OBS and it gets the job done at decent quality and a cheap price. Now for the cons. The main one I have is this quarter 20 port on the bottom is just not compatible with a lot of things since it's made for tripod mounts. Get the Rycote universal mount that mounts from the side. It is a little more expensive, but it's really the only one I can confidently see working for this one. So that is kind of a con. You do have to pay a little bit more for your shock mount if you're going to get that. Con number two is the knobs on the back are a little stiff and hard to turn, but once you get them tuned to exactly where you want them, you're good to go. You don't have to retune them again. You just set it and forget it. Number three con, this mic runs a little hot, about two, three decibels hotter than the Yeti and the G-Track, which makes it way more sensitive to bumps and kicks and humming and background noise and especially keyboard noise. So you really do have to get a boom arm and a shock mount. And once I actually got this on a boom arm and a shock mount, that essentially eliminated those issues altogether or at least greatly reduced them. My best tips for using this mic, again, put it on a boom arm and a shock mount. Get a windscreen that reduces plosives like P's and B's. You know, like that. Ruins your audio. Get a pop filter, a windscreen or a pop guard solves that issue. My number two tip is to fine tune the gain on your mic to get the best sound without blowing it out. What I liked the best was around 70% gain on the mic and maybe 15 to 20% volume in system settings on Windows. However, you can mess around with that and get the best sound for your particular setup. Number three is definitely consider sound treating your room with wedge foam like we've got or bass traps or anything to reduce the echo off the wall since these mics are super, super sensitive and they're gonna pick up everything so yes 
definitely sound treat your room if you have it in your budget. And lastly, one of the best tips I can give you is look into getting some plugins for OBS like compression, EQ, dynamics, noise gate. All of those are going to help you get the best sound out of whatever mic you choose. And that's it for me. Whenever this mic releases in the US with its upgraded packaging, we'll have a link in the description below so you can check that out. Also, we're gonna do a giveaway on Airbear's Twitch stream. Make sure you're following Airbear on Twitch and have notifications turned on to be included for that. Links in the description below, so don't miss that. If you like this review and you thought it was helpful, make sure to slap that like button. It's greatly appreciated. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we drop a new review on other tech. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll make sure to respond as fast as I can. And that's about it for me, y'all. Until next time, stay fresh.